Welcome back to the video hustle and by the way I don't think I've actually explained to you guys why I call this the video hustle. If you're a freelancer like me, come the first of the month you need to secure gigs. Get on the phone, get on email, start hustling. In order to secure those gigs, in order to get paid that month, in order for you to pay your own bills that month. So yeah, the hustle is real, every day we are hustling. So many moons ago when I started out doing video production, this is the bad boy that I bought. Canon. 5D Mark II. This back then was a beast. A very lightweight, which I prefer. I'm predominantly a running gun type of guy, so being able to do this, hold it in one hand. Look, I've already naturally got a little bit of a shake. So what I would do is pop a monopod at the bottom, put it over my shoulder, and then literally run and gun like this. So this camera was a beast. Predominantly, I used most of it for digital work, YouTube, Facebook, that type of videos, and also managed to do some TV stuff with it as well. Got a full frame sensor, so the image quality coming out of this is really great. Luckily, when I bought this camera, I did get a 24 to 105 mm 4.0 lens. Great advantage of this little setup was the lens has an image stabilizer, so specifically if you're shooting video and handheld, it makes it great for just stabilizing your shots a little bit. It also has an insane battery life if you're using the Canon batteries where for a full day shoot you could probably use two or three batteries maximum so that really made it very versatile. After a while I did start seeing some limitations to this camera. One of them being that it only shoots at 25 frames per second or goes up to 25 frames per second. In edit when you pull in a 25 frames per second video clip and you try to slow-mo it you'll start getting jaggedy footage so ideally you would like to get a camera that can shoot higher than let's say 50 frames per second which unfortunately this camera at the time did not do so for the next camera i started to use i'm going to need to change the setup a bit because i'm actually filming with it right now fast forward a few years and i upgrade to the canon 5d mark IV. Now this, as we mentioned earlier, was bought specifically with the 50 frames per second element in mind. This is just a protective silicone case that I put over it, just to protect it obviously from dusts and scratches. Now what makes a big difference on the footage coming out of this camera is a 24-70mm 2.8 Tamron lens that I've got on here. It gives you a much deeper depth of field than you would with, for example, the lens on there now, which is the 24-105mm to 4.0 lens. This Canon 5D Mark IV has been my go-to camera for probably the last three years. It's lightweight, it's sturdy, you can throw it in a travel bag and travel with it. It's good for TV productions, it's good for digital video productions. It even shoots 4K at 25 frames per second. That being said, towards the end of 2019, I needed a camera that shoots a little bit higher frame rate at 4K so that we can start doing some slow-mo stuff when doing specifically 4K video productions. End of 2019, and this is what I managed to get my hands on. The Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K. Reason behind it being, it shoots 6K. Back then, there were very few cameras on the market that could shoot 4K as well as 50 frames per second. Getting your hands on the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K is extremely daunting. Uh, there was a period for about two weeks after starting to play around with it where I actually thought that I made a mistake. Luckily, the interactive screen at the back is pretty simple to understand. But once you wrap your head around the battery life on this thing, as well as the storage space that you need when filming 4K or even 6K, it, it blows your mind and it actually makes you want to put the camera down and rather look for something else. The battery life on this camera, if you're using the Canon batteries, is horrible. You would probably get about 10 minutes if you're lucky if you're shooting an interview. And storage space for, let's say, a 10 minute interview shooting at 4K, you'd probably run through about 100 gig of footage obviously depending on what settings you are. 
So that to me was a big concern. But subsequent to that, I've managed to find ways to make this camera work where it's still relatively lightweight, still manageable, still adaptable, and you can still run and gun with it successfully. The 4K video quality of this camera at this stage in the game is unrivaled. We took it through its paces towards the end of 2019 as well as the beginning of 2020 on a few 4K shoots. And I mean the footage in itself speak volumes. Once you get your head around the storage space and battery life really is a majestic thing to behold. Thanks for sticking around for this episode. In some of the next episodes, we'll be looking deeper into how to make the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K work for you with regards to battery life, with regards to storage space. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. See you next time.